This is our second video on um, Edexcel Additional Chemistry Topic 2 and this video is focusing on the structure and properties of ionic compounds. Now, for foundation tier, we need to be able to describe the properties of these compounds. We need, need to be able to talk about, firstly, their melting points and boiling points. We also need to be able to talk about their conductivity. Okay, so do they conduct electricity, and if so, when? Okay, for higher tier, we also need to be able to explain why ionic compounds have the properties they do. Okay, we said in the first video um, that if we have a metal and a non-metal, for example, sodium and chlorine, so, um, the metal will transfer one or more electrons to the non-metal, forming a positive metal cation and a negative metal anion. We said that these ions are held together um, by the strong force of attraction or the electrostatic attraction between positive and negative ions. Now, what determines the properties of these compounds is to do with these or this strong electrostatic force between the ions. And what we need to understand is that there aren't just one positive, there isn't just one positive ion and one negative ion in isolation. Okay, they're not on their own. Actually, they form a large crystal structure called an ionic lattice. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to represent my my metal um, ion just with a circle with a plus in it. So each one of those represents this whole ion. I'm going to represent my negative ion, my non-metal ion with a circle and a negative. And what you need to remember is that between any positive and any negative, we have a strong electrostatic attraction. Okay, so if I start drawing the structure out, what we have is a positive um, ion at a certain point. Then at a certain distance away, I have a negative ion, okay? And then these keep on repeating positive and negative, okay? But it doesn't just go in one dimension, okay? They also go up as well. So I'll have positive, negative, positive, Okay, I'll try and draw these in as we go through. This might take a while to draw it all out. Okay, so I, I'm starting to build up my crystal structure with positive metal ions and negative non-metal ions. Okay, so this is now showing my, well, a, the start of a crystal. Okay. However, this is still only in two dimensions, okay? Because it is a crystal, it is a three-dimensional shape, I also get it going in three dimensions as well. This is where it starts to get a bit trickier to draw. Okay, so we're starting to get the idea it isn't just these aren't just going in one dimension they are going in three dimensions okay and for every positive I have okay it is surrounded by um, negative ions and for every negative I have they're surrounded by positive ions okay this is just a very small section I'm not going to draw any more than that, but hopefully you get the idea um, where if you were to take any positive ion, it's going to be surrounded, okay, by, actually for sodium chloride's case, it's surrounded by six negative ions. So every positive ion I have will actually be surrounded by six negative ions, if you imagine that I've got a negative up here as well. Okay, so what this means then is that every single ion, positive or negative, is surrounded by a large number of oppositely charged ions. And between all of these ions, there are very, very, very strong electrostatic forces or ionic bonds. Okay, so I've got lots of strong ionic bonds in my 3D lattice. Okay, so we've got lots of strong ionic bonds in, the, in my 3D lattice. 
lattice. Okay, each one. Um, takes a large amount of energy to break. Okay, so because I've got a large number of strong ionic bonds, each one takes a large amount of energy to break. This is going to give my um, ionic compound, my, my lattice structure, a very high melting point and boiling point. Okay, so I've got lots of strong um, ionic bonds. In order to melt or boil um, this crystal structure, I have to break or overcome all these strong forces, and that takes a lot of energy, um, so um, requires a high temperature. Okay, so this is our explanation of melting point and boiling point. Okay, when it comes to conductivity, it is very closely related. For anything to conduct electricity, we need to have charges that are able to flow. So if you imagine an electrical wire, we have got electrons on negative charges that are able to flow along the wire um, as a current um, which will allow the wire to conduct electricity. In an ionic compound, when um, the ionic compound is solid, all of the ions, all of the charged particles are fixed in place by these strong electrostatic forces. They cannot move when the ionic compound is solid. However, if I do um, heat up the ionic compound to a very high temperature and melt it, what I actually do is start to overcome, overcome these ionic bonds, these um, forces, and that allows the ions to start to move. So if I have a beaker, okay, and I had, say, um, surgeon chloride in it, and I get it extremely hot, okay, the ions start to be able to move. Okay, so they're no longer held in a rigid lattice structure by the strong forces. They are able to move around wherever they want. Okay, what this means is if I were to put a positive electrode in and negative electrode, because the ions are now free to move, the negative um, ions will um, be attracted to the positive electrode. Okay, the positive ions will flow or be attracted to the negative electrode, and this um, liquid, this molten salt, will be able to conduct electricity. The other way I can make anionic, com anionic compounds conduct electricity, okay, again, is by separating these ions out, by overcoming the other strong electrostatic forces. But the other way to do it is simply by dissolving them in water. Most ionic compounds are water-soluble. They will dissolve in water. Um, and, what, and what actually happens is the water molecules are able to um, help to stabilise the ions Okay, so the water molecules can make the ions more stable and that allows the electrostatic forces to be overcome without using lots of heat. Okay, so any time you dissolve a salt in water, you get a similar, um, similar idea to this. Um, the ions become free to move, so the compound can conduct electricity. So just to recap, a solid ionic compound doesn't conduct. Okay. However, a liquid, okay, so a, a molten ionic compound, or a solution, an ionic compound dissolved in water, does conduct. Okay. So you need to remember that ionic compounds have high melting boiling points because there are lots of strong electrostatic forces in the lattice structure that must be overcome. You need to remember that a solid ionic compound does not conduct electricity because the ions are fixed by strong electrostatic forces. However, when you overcome those forces, either by melting the salt or by dissolving it, it then does conduct electricity.